What's up guys, this is Willie. Welcome back to Three Pedal Devils. If you've seen our last few videos, you've seen by now that I picked up this brand new $1400 Tau Tau TBR7 Enduro type motorcycle. My plan is to fix it up a little bit, do some modifications, and then take it on a 600 plus mile off-road journey with about another four or 500 miles back home. So total for about a thousand mile trip that I'm gonna take with this Chinese bike. It's pretty ambitious, but um, We'll be gearing up for that here over the next few weeks on this channel. But in today's video, I want to take a little bit of a break from the mods and cover just some of the super weird things about this bike. I mean, being, you know, that cheap and made in China, you can kind of assume that this thing's going to have some quirks to it, and it sure does. So in today's video, I will point those out and uh, show you what I think is pretty funny about this bike. So one of the things that is super weird about this bike in the process of buying and receiving it in general was just the packaging that it came in. So this thing came in a cardboard box, like normal single layer thick cardboard box. It was pretty huge. It came on a pallet in a freight truck. Um, inside the box, this thing was partially assembled and kind of loosely attached to this really garbage metal structure. It was some angle iron that was maybe steel, but <laughs> likely Chineseium or maybe a little bit of who knowsium. Um, it was some pretty garbage metal, very weak, clearly very cheap. And I did actually have an, an issue where the mount down here that held the front forks to the metal frame actually broke free. So my bike shifted down a little bit during shipping, uh, broke through the cardboard box, and then I actually had some components fall out in the shipping truck. One of them, one of them being the clevis for my rear brake, brake lever. Luckily, the shipping guy noticed it and handed it to me, um, figuring it was from the shipment. So shout out to that guy for doing a good job and you know getting me my part because that would have sucked to not have that when I first got the bike. Another weird thing that you notice when you first get this bike is that it's partially assembled, like the swing arm is all built up, the engine's on, some of the plastics are on, but most of them aren't. Just kind of some seemingly random things that weren't installed, and they kind of just come plastic wrapped up, and all the fasteners and parts like that just end up in a box, and you just kind of have this whole pile of hardware with not much instruction on what to do with them. So that's pretty weird and also pretty challenging and annoying if you're buying one of these. So the part I mentioned about how it doesn't come with much instruction when you get this thing on how to assemble it, it does come with one paper that is assembly instructions. And those instructions show you how to mount these handguards. Here it is. I figured that was kind of weird that the only thing that they showed you how to put on is the handguards, considering they're one of the easier parts to figure out. Um, you gotta mount the all the plastics, the headlight, the speedometer cluster, the exhaust, the skid plates, the rear brake lever, the shift lever, a uh, whole bunch of different stuff that you would think require instructions a lot more than installing the handguards. So I thought that was weird that they even bothered to give instructions for those. And if you own one of these bikes or are planning on picking one up and are running into any assembly issues or are thinking that you might run into assembly issues. I do have some other videos on the channel where I showed how to install some of the more uh, confusing parts. So those will probably help you out. Feel free to go check those out and subscribe to the channel to see the next couple tutorials I put together for this thing. Also check out the channel, I think it's called Jay's So Low It Hurts. I'll link him down below, but he is super active on the Tao Tao Owners Group on Facebook, and he's got his own channel where he makes a whole bunch of um, really quick, straight to the point, Tao Tao TBR7 uh, tutorials and modification tutorials. So definitely go check him out. He's a good resource. And yeah, we'll both gladly help you out. So feel free to reach out. Don't struggle through this stuff on your own. There's a lot of people with this bike and lots of people to speed up that process and make sure that you're on a safe machine. One of the other things that I found to be pretty hilarious with this bike was just all of the markings that are English translations. Um, a lot of them didn't quite go as planned on Tao Tao's end. So if you look at this one, 
It says gear shift is prohibited unless accelerator is loosed. Not sure what the heck that means. It also says right above that gear poet ident. Interesting. Someone decipher that one for me. Another one back here. We've got this vehicle confa. Oh, I didn't even notice that last time. Confafums, not conforms. This vehicle confafums to all applic a applic IL Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards in the date of manufacture shown above. And moving right along to the last funny sticker on this bike, we have caution. Check the oil enough or not before starting. And running time shouldn't be over 50 kilometers per hour. So yeah, to be honest, I'm not really sure what all of those mean. You know, you can kind of kind of guess, you know, what they were going for, but just those translations are pretty hilarious. There's also some translations in the owner's manual that are pretty funny, but just thought I'd point those out cuz uh we had a good time laughing over those when we first took a look at this thing when it came in. Next weird thing on the list is that the Tau Tau TBR7 comes with a toolkit. First thing I noticed when I pulled this toolkit out was the just amazing stitching work. You can see they've got a nice stitch all the way across. Kind of a weird angle back here and then almost like a straight back with a curve and then over there. You can see the stitching on the back side. Some sweet lines there holding the Velcro on. It gets even funnier when you go inside and see the super high quality tools that it comes with. The main one is these epic slip joint pliers. Just get a lot of clamping force out of that for sure. Just real tight tolerance, high quality tools you can see, obviously. The wrenches aren't too bad. I haven't tried if they actually fit on anything. Ends are pretty pointy. Those are more or less normal. It was mo mainly the slip joints and the pouch that they came in. These are just horrible quality. They weigh absolutely nothing. Just thought it was even pretty funny that it even came with a tool pouch. I'm sure they were required to. Getting close to the end of the list of the hilarious things of this bike, stick with me. The last one's pretty funny. You don't want to miss that. Pretty weird part about this bike is the exhaust system. Uh, you can't see it because I've got it mounted up, but the uh, gasket for the header side of the exhaust is like a neon orange. Just kind of weird that it's such a strange color. The main weird part about the exhaust is this guy right here. Some sort of like purge valve, just welded onto a bung on the side of the header, just kind of sticks off into nowhere, has this weird tube coming off of it, this rubber hose with what looks like some sort of filter with just like an exposed hose barb on the end that doesn't hook up to anything. We looked for quite a while and argued back and forth as to whether this actually had to hook up to anything on the bike. And according to everyone on the owner's group Facebook page, it vents to open air and doesn't hook up to anything. Incredibly weird. I don't know what that's for, but if I ever replace my exhaust, I'm going to disassemble this little valve and figure out how it works and break that down so we can demystify it because I just don't understand why they would have needed to put that on this bike. If you do, drop a comment, let me know why but I thought that was super strange. And here it is, the last and weirdest thing that I've found with this bike. If I turn the ignition on, listen what happens when I turn on one of the turn signals. And when I turn it off, no more beeping. I've never seen that on any road legal vehicle ever <laughs> that the beepers turn on when you turn on your signals. I took the seat off at one point and found a little uh, the flasher relay flasher box that controls the turn signals and there's a little chime on there with two wires going to the printed circuit board and that's what's making all that ruckus and that's what's making all that racket. Um, I wanted to disable it but since it was wired to the board and the the connections were kind of bridged to another spot on 
the printed circuit board, I wasn't sure if I was going to mess up any of the connections in the circuit by cutting those wires, so I just waited for a little bit until I had time to take a look at that. But I did notice on one of the Jay's So Low It Hurts videos that he was able to just snip those wires and his blinkers worked fine with no beeping. So I am going to go ahead and do that and make this bike stop beeping because it is so, so annoying when you're just hearing beep, 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 beep this whole time when you're sitting at a stoplight with your blinkers on. I know the boys hate it too when we're riding together, so I'm going to shut that off. And there you have it. There's some of the weirdest things that I've found about the 2021 Tao Tao TBR7. Um, it's a strange bike, but all jokes aside, this thing is pretty awesome. I'm super happy with the product for the money. You got to go into something like this with the right expectations. You can't buy a $1,400 bike from China and expect it to be a high quality $8,000 Honda or Yamaha. It's just not really a reasonable thing to assume. So you got to go into it with the right expectations and you know be willing to work on this thing a little bit and fix its quirks. But other than that, it's been a great entry for me to get into the hobby of off-road riding and I'd recommend it to anyone with some basic hands-on and mechanics type knowledge who can who's willing to take on the project and join the Tao Tao owners family. So I'm going to end this video here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the funny things with this bike. If you're buying one or own one of these bikes, feel free to hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos about my Tao Tao as I make some different modifications for it. I've got some custom 3D printed parts I'm planning for this thing as well as a bunch of other different mods with parts from Amazon. So we'll, we'll have those kicked off in future videos, but until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, and one last thing. I forgot Matt wanted me to mention how weird these keys were. Super long for a motorcycle key. Usually motorcycle keys are super stubby, uh, but this is more like car length key. Pretty strange. It's also got a weird nub on the back that's to uh, actuate a little plate lock that swings a metal plate over the ignition cylinder so you can't put any sort of key in there. Um, so that's kind of weird. Sorry, Matt. Forgot to put that in the main part of the video. Catch you in the next one. Hit the like button.